Nashalakaya Jaksur Nilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayeva Chapatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our study of the Srimad Bhagavatam at Bhakti Vai Bhav. We're on third canto. Today beginning chapter number 20. Conversation between Maitreya and Vidura. Alright, so the relationship with the previous verse, previous chapter. In the previous chapter we were hearing about Haranyaksha and Lord Varaha. How Lord Varaha appeared and killed the demon Haranyaksha. And the pastime was very enlivening. Sonaka was very happy to hear this. He wants to hear more about the glories of the Lord. So we can see the chapter begins with Sonaka speaking, addressing Sutta Goswami, that after the earth was again situated in its orbit, what did Swain Bhuvamanu do to show the path of liberation to persons who were to take birth later on? So Manu is eager to know about how uh, Swain Bhuvamanu is going to arrange for the liberation of persons who are going to take their birth. In addition, he also wants to hear more about the glories of the Lord. So that is the brief connection to the previous section. So we hear about uh, Vidura. Vidura is described as being a great devotee. Well, first of all, the first, the first verse, first purport talks about the duration of the life of Manu. And describe, right? How many Manus in one day of Brahma? Fourteen, fourteen Manus. Fourteen Manus, right. So, fourteen divided by how much? In one day of Brahma, how many Divya Yugas are there? One thousand. Yes, so fourteen into one thousand and you get the duration of the life of Brahma, the life of Manu rather, the life of Manu shown here. It comes to like 72. If you divide a thousand, 14 into a thousand, you get 72. And then 4,320,000, that is the, what is that figure? Do you remember? 4,320,000. What does that figure? Where does that come from? Yes? Someone? Nobody know? It is a Satya Trita Gapa Kari. These four Jugas combined together, it is 43 lakh 20,000. That's right. Kali Yoga itself. How long, what is the duration of Kali Yuga? 432,000 years. That's right. And then multiplied by 10. Why? That is Satya Tata Dhapar Kali. Yes. 2, 3, 4. Right? Treta Yuga is twice the Kali Yuga. Oh, Dwapara Yuga is twice the Kali Yuga. And then Treta Yuga is three times. And then Sat Yuga is four times Kali Yuga. So four and three 
and two and one make ten. And so Kali Yuga was four lakh thirty two thousand and multiply by ten you get forty three lakh twenty thousand, which is the duration of one Divya Yuga. And Manu lives for seventy two of these Divya Yugas. So that's the duration of Manu's life. And which man who's the man who is in power now at this time? Seventh man, Vaivasatna. Right. And wh what about Swayam Bhuva Manu? Who is he? He's the, he's the past man. Right. Good. Yes. Thank you, Prabhu. All right. And then chapter goes on to hear about, we hear about Vidura. Vidura is a great devotee. Why is he a great devotee? Because uh, he was, uh, formerly he was uh, Yamaraj. Yes. Yamaraj was cursed to become what? Under Sudra. Take birth as a Sudra. Okay. And then he was born from the... How, how, what made him a great devotee? Who was the father? There is uh, Dasa. Vyasadeva, right. It's born by the semen of Vyas, but in the womb of a Sudra woman. So he's a great devotee and he's connected to Dhritarashtra and Pandu. He's her brother and he gives mercy to Dhritarashtra at the end of Dhritarashtra's life. But here, we're hearing about Vidura inquiring from Maitreya. And... and uh, Sonaka wants to hear more about what did they discuss? What was the conversation between Vidura and Maitreya? So it was described, Vidura met Maitreya at Hardwar. Of course, first of all, originally Vidura met with Uddhava. Then Uddhava requested him to go to Maitreya and he met Maitreya at Hardwar and there was, there was conversation. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to be careful about background noise. So in the purport here, you have interesting comment here, Prabhupada quotes Naratam Das Thakur, that Naratam Das Thakur said, no point to go to holy places, because in this age, times have so changed, that if a person may be sincere, he may go to a holy place, he may be polluted, he may be affected by some of the different uh, nonsense activities which go on in the holy place. So Naratam Das Thakur recommends that instead of going to the holy place, we should just concentrate our mind on Govinda and that will be good and that will be better rather than risking bad association which you may get in the holy place. But then Prabhupada adds a comment, he said, to concentrate one's mind on Govinda in any place is a path meant for those who are the most spiritually advanced. It is not for ordinary persons. Ordinary persons may still derive benefit from traveling to holy places like Prayag, Mathura, Vrindavan and Hardwar. So Prabhupada is encouraging ordinary people that it will be good for them to go to holy places. Naratam Das Thakur was worried that Naratam Das Thakur thought better just to chant the holy name, just to think of God, think of Govinda in private rather than risk going to the holy place. But Prabhupada said for ordinary people, it's still good for them to go to visit holy places. Okay, so then there's uh, Sonika's inquiring. He wants to hear more about what they talked about. 
And you can see here in text number five, Prabhupada's purport, he talks about the absolute nature of the Lord. The, the Lord is absolute. There is no difference between his words, his perspiration, or his pastimes. The water of the Ganges, the narrations of his pastimes, and the words spoken by him are all on the absolute platform. And thus taking shelter of any one of them is equally good. Srila Rupa Goswami has enunciated that anything in relation with Krishna is on the transcendental platform. If we can dovetail all our activities in relationship with Krishna, then we do not stand on the material platform, but stand on the spiritual platform. So this is very important for us to remember. Everything, we want to connect it to Krishna, right? Nirbandha Krishna Sambandhi Dyokta Vairagya Uchati. Actual renunciation is everything in connection with Krishna. So Krishna Sambandha, this is the idea. And then Prabhupada gives examples, he says that the, the, the perspiration not different from his words or his pastimes. Okay, so uh, the chapter continues going on up to text number eight. We have Sutta Goswami speaking to Vidura. Oh, rather, Sutta, Sutta Goswami is describing about Vidura, how Vidura was so happy to hear about Lord Varaha. It was very pleasing to him to hear how Lord Varaha could kill the, the demon Haranyaksha. So then Vidura has an inquiry that uh, he wants to know what did, this is text number nine, what did Brahma do to create living beings after evolving the prajapatis, the progenitors or of living beings? So prajapatis like uh, Swambhuva Manu, the, what did Brahma do to create these beings after evolving the prajapatis. And how did, then going ahead, text number 10, how did the prajapatis such as Marichi and Swayambhuvamanu, how did they create according to the instructions of Brahma? And how did they evolve this manifested universe? Did they evolve the creation in conjunction with their respective wives? Or did they remain independent in their action? Or did they all jointly produce it? So that is Vidura's inquiry. He wants to hear again about the creation. The creation had already been discussed earlier in this canto. And again, it's coming up here in this chapter. Each time it's presented a little different. So here in this chapter, we're going to hear about the Swarga and Visharga, Sarga and Visharga, right? There's two phases of the creation. There's a primary creation, which is coming from Mahavishnu, and then you have the secondary creation the creation of Brahma. So Maitreya describes here, text number 12. When the equilibrium of the combination of the three modes of nature was agitated by the unseen activity of the living entity, by Mahavishnu, and by the force of time, the total material elements were produced. 
So in other words, you were hearing first about the sarga, the creation of the material elements. Behind everything, there has to be some uh, primary creation. Just like when we look at the buildings around us, we understand that there, these buildings are constructed and there are many people involved in constructing the buildings. People finance it and people design it. And then you have different engineers who come because you have to have water supply and maybe even you have also natural gas supply, you have electricity supply. So the, the infrastructure is very important. You have to have all of these different things connected to the building. So behind everything there has to be also some supplier of the different elements. Just like you have to get cement, you have to get materials, wood and glass, and so many different materials are all required. Steel are required to make the reinforcements, and so many different things are required. And where to get all of these things? Of course, there has to be some suppliers. So similarly, with the creation of the universe, there has to be the original material elements. There, these things have to be produced. And then only the creation can begin. So Brahma is more like an engineer. The engineers, they simply take the parts and assemble everything, put them together. Just like motor cars. You get so many parts and you put them all together. Or computers, you get so many parts. Mobile phones, you have to put them all together. Who makes all the parts? The initial supply has to be there, the microchips to assemble everything. So similarly here with the universal creation, the material elements have to be evolved. And it's coming due to Mahavishnu and the force of time. So these two things are required in the creation of the material elements. Maharaj, can I ask one question, Maharaj? Okay. Yeah, in this uh, 12, uh, verse, uh, this is a living entity, considered a living entity. So who is this living entity? The, invi the, the invisible living entity, the unseen yeah. acti or the unseen activity yeah. of the living entity. Yes, yeah, this is Mahavishnu. Uh, uh, he is also regarded as a living entity. Oh yes. Okay. It's also a living entity. Okay. But it's not a jiva. Just like the Lord is also a living entity, he's, a, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he's not on our, we're not on his level. Okay, Okay, so, impelled by the destiny of the jiva, the false ego, which is of three kinds, evolved from the Mahatattva, text number 13, in which the elements of rajas dominate. From the ego, in turn, evolve many groups of five principles. So, I'm sure you're familiar with this the different groups of five principles, right? They're mentioned in the purport here. First of all, you have the five, the gross elements, the Mahabhuti, the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. 
And then the second group is the subtle elements, the sense objects, sound, touch, form, taste, smell, also described as the tanmatra. Then the third group of five is the indriyas, the, the karmindriyas, the working senses. You have working senses and you have knowledge acquiring senses, jnanindriya. So the jnanindriyas are the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue and the skin. And the karmindriyas are the speech, the hands, the feet, the anus and the genitals. Or the evacuating organ and the generating organ. And here they add another group which is uh, not always there, but in this particular case, it's some people add, and Prabhupada mentions, the fifth group is the five deities who control these divisions. So, the five deities, the different de some people, of course, they will worship these deities. So these deities are empowered by the Lord to help in the work of this creation. But Maharaj, uh, yes? <coughs> but the deities uh, are not included in the material universe. Yes, they're, but they're diff they're the, they're, there's different deities which are uh, Above that, they're, they're helping with the work of creation, you see, they're already, they're not, they're not like the deities as we know them, it's not like the demigods as we know them. They're the, they're the special uh, deities who are actually there for the sake of the creating the different elements of the material world and the senses and so on. They're, they're not uh, like they're not like demigods, not like that. Who are just working with the material nature. They actually these deities actually control these divisions. Anyway, Prabhupada doesn't get into it here. But there are these deities but who are already there, they're like uh, they're, they're not created, they don't take birth, they're, they actually have like sp spiritual bodies and they're empowered to do this kind of work, the service of the Lord, to assist in the work of creation and producing the different elements. So there are devatas like that who are there, who are not just some kind of demigod, but they're actually empowered by the Lord to oversee these different elements, in the different senses. But Maharaj, there are, <clears throat> there are ten uh, senses in total, five knowledge acquiring senses and five working senses. So the five deities or demigods, they control all these ten senses? They control the group. They're like there's a, a deity for each group. Right? Prabhupada talks about the group, the five deities, five, the fifth group. So the deities who control these divisions, just like we have five elements, and with each element, each element is connected with a particular sense, right? Each, with each element is, is connected with a particular sense. Just like sound, you're connected with the ear. And uh, the sense object is, so, well, sound is the sense object, and you use the ears, and the knowledge acquiring senses will be the ear. 
the working senses, that's some, they're not so much involved with that. But the, you do have speech. You have speech there. So it's connected with the ear. So each of the objects, of each of the elements of the material nature are connected to a particular sense organ. With smell, you use the nose. So the sense object is smell. And not that not the Gyanandriya is the nose. You won't you won't use the working senses for that. Not involved, not required. But the five five deities controlling these divisions. So divisions. There's one division, so one division for each of the elements, each of the great elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. There's one division. And there's a sense object and there's a gyan indriya. They're con all connected together. And so there'll be one deity also overseeing them. All right? You might yes, thank you. So then we hear about how the Lord enters. First of all, the universes come out from the body of Mahavishnu, and it is described that the, the universes are like eggs. Each of the universes are like eggs. And it's described how all the universes are floating in the causal ocean. They lay on the waters of the causal ocean in the lifeless state. And then the Lord, meaning Lord Mahavishnu, enters it as Garbhodakashayi Vishnu. And then from, from Garbhodakashayi Vishnu's body, perspiration comes and fills up the bottom half of the universe. And the Lord lays down on that water of the Garbhodak ocean in the bottom half of the universe. And the top half of the universe is space. And when Garbhodak Shai Vishnu is laying down, then the lotus flower comes out from his navel. And from that lotus flower, we get the birth of Brahma. So this is the explanation given here. It's described how the personality of Godhead enters the heart of Brahma. So who enters the heart of Brahma? Siruddhoksa Vishnu. Yes. So Vishnu expands himself into the heart of Brahma. Brahma brought his intelligence to bear and with the intelligence invoked he began to create the universe as it was before. So this... So, Maharaj, Karandoksha Vishnu by glancing manifested the material nature for creation. And Kirudoksha Vishnu resided within the heart of all living and non-living beings. What is the role played by Karandoksha Vishnu? Only perspiration and making the, uh, making the world have with water or any other role Vishnu Well, of course he has to give birth to Brahma. The lotus flowers coming from his navel and Brahma is taking birth from there. So that's a very important role. That he's there in each universe. Okay. And then he, from him, expands Shirodakashai Vishnu. The Shirodakashai Vishnu expands from the Garbhodakashai Vishnu. 
Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is the, the universe, uh, the lord of the universe. And it's Karana Dakshaya Vishnu who is the lord of the whole material creation, who is laying in the causal ocean. All right. Yeah, all right. Okay. okay, so Garbhodakshaya Vishnu expands it, and then we go on to hear about how Brahma, text number 18, Brahma creates from his shadow the coverings of ignorance of the conditioned soul. So this covering of ignorance, this is very important in the material world. There has to be this covering of ignorance for us to live here in this material world. And the, the different coverings are all mentioned here. First of all, we hear Tamishra, then Anda Tamishra, Tamas, Moha and Maha Moha. So these are the five different coverings of ignorance which are there on the living entities in the material world. So the first covering is uh, described here in Prabhupada's purport that every living entity misuses their independence to think that he is also an enjoyer like the Supreme Lord. And we think, why should I not be a free enjoyer like the Lord? So we forget our position and we become envious of the Lord and we try to compete with him. So this is the first ignorance which affects the living entity in the material existence. So Prabhupada explains, even in the field of spiritual realization, this Tamishra mentality of the living entity is hard to overcome. Even in the field of spiritual realization, we have this problem, this ignorance. How does it come? In what way? Hmm? What is Prabhupada talking about here? In spiritual life, there's also this Tamishra mentality. Yes? Someone? Maybe Puja Lava Pratishtha. Sorry? Maybe Puja Lava Pratishtha. La, put, la puja pratista, prophet adoration and distinction. <coughs> uh, yes, well, that that's a different kind of ignorance, but oh, he, but here, Prabhupada Tamishra Tamishra indicates uh, that uh, to be one with the supreme Lord. Right, supreme. that's the point. Yeah, that, but the idea of merging the oneness with the Lord. This is the Tamishra mentality, the ignorance. We're thinking that we can actually become one with the Lord. So, even in transcendental activities, this ignorance continues. This is a danger that even though we may become engaged in spirit in the path of spiritual realization. We may not be free of this ignorance, the idea of com becoming one, that putting ourselves putting ourselves on the same level as the Lord, not le recognizing our subordinate position. All right, and then the next stage of ignorance, anda tamishra. What is that? Prabhupada explains involves considering death to be the ultimate end. So some people think at the time of death everything is finished. 
right? Prabhupada went to Russia, Moscow, it was 1971, and Prabhupada met with the pro professor of Asian studies in the Moscow University, a man named Professor Katovsky. And so Prabhupada was explaining to him about the law of reincarnation, about how whatever you remember at the end of life, then you'll get that kind of life in the next birth. And then the professor said to Prabhupada, he said, Oh Swamiji, at the time of death everything is finished. So this was, un, um, this is this Anda Tamisha. People who think that at the time of death there's, everything is finished. There's no next life. There's no in other words, there's no soul, there's no spiritual identity. And we're just simply material elements. And at the time of death, everything is finished. One life. And even you, you get this mentality, uh, well, it's not quite the same, but in Christianity they will speak. They will speak only one judgment and no redemption. Either hell or damnation. <laughs> and so the Christian idea is that uh, you only get one chance, you don't get another chance. There's no second chance, as we say. So this Professor Kotovsky, of course, because he's a Russian communist, and the communists, they don't believe in God, they don't believe in religion. So he was studying Asian philosophy. And when Prabhupada spoke about taking a next birth, he just said, no. Swamiji, at the time of death, everything is finished. So this is, this is Andatamishra, thinking at the time of death, that that's the end. So we're trying to explain to people, we're trying to enlighten people about the actual nature of life and teach them about the soul, understanding there is a spiritual particle. Prabhupada says, this atheistic conception of life is killing human civilization, for it is without knowledge of the continuation of eternal life. So people, it's convenient for people to think like this, because they think, if there's a next life, then I'm, I'll be punished for all my sins. So people don't like to think about the next life. So they would just say, at the time of death, everything is finished. And that, that way they have a license to do all the nonsense and to do all the sinful things they do. And they think, nobody's going to punish me. So those people who are atheistic, sometimes they will explain why they are atheists. Because if, if they had actually admitted that there's a next life, then they're obliged to properly live their life and properly follow religious principles. Alright, then the next ignorance is called Anda Tamisra. Prabhupada says, alright, so we, we, had, we had Anda Tamisra and then next is, oh, after... We have Tamisra, under Tamisra, and then the next one is called Tamas. This under Tamisra ignorance is due to Tamas, the condition of not knowing anything about the spirit soul is called Tamas. So Tamas, they don't know anything about the soul. They simply know the body. This is my body and anything in relationship with this body is mine. This is ignorance. And then next you have moha or illusion. Moha, the illusion of the bodily concept of life. 
Thus the idea that I am this body and everything belonging to this body is mine also increases. And as the whole world is put into moha or illusion, sectarian societies, families, and nationalities are created and they fight with one another. As we see going on at the present moment, we see fighting going on. I am Russian, I am Ukrainian, and they're fighting and killing each other. It's so, it's, this is just the moha, this is the illusion, bodily life. And then maha moha means to be mad after material enjoyment. Srila Prabhupada explains, especially in this age of Kali, everyone is overwhelmed by the madness to accumulate paraphernalia for material enjoyment. And these in Vishnu Purana. And then Prabhupada, there's a couple of verses quoted. But we don't. So the, this are five different ignorances which are described, which are essential for the material creation. So the living entities and these coverings of ignorance. Okay, we'll go ahead. Text number nineteen, and we're going to hear now. Uh, Maharaja, this all is one of the constituents of. Matter nature <clears throat> that these uh, five illusions were created by Brahma. So there is a difference that strikes my mind to understand. Maybe please. Is there a difference between false ego and these five creations of Brahma? Well, Def yeah, as per definitions, it is apparent that there is some difference. Yes. Yes. The false ego we heard, the false ego was mentioned that it's influenced by the three modes of nature. And due to the false ego, the three modes of nature, the different elements, the senses and so on are produced, right? That that's described in the in the process of creation. Mention text thirteen. Impelled by the destiny of the jiva, the false ego, which is of three kinds, evolved from the Mahatattva, in which the element of rajas predominates, and from the ego in turn evolves many groups of five. And you hear we, we spoke about the different senses. So that was the, the false ego, the ahankar, and the different modes of nature. Uh, Maharaj, this five type of illusion is uh, any object or, uh, or it, is, it is not any object? Well, it is the ignorance, it's the ignorance of the living entity so that we can, that, that we're here in the material world and that we want to Enjoy. We're thinking to enjoy, and um, we're thinking ourselves to we make a comfortable home for ourselves here in this world. Yes. Uh, but Maharaj, in the twenty-eight element, this agyan uh, is not there. Means this illusion is not there. Means suppose mahatattva is some object, ego is some object. Is this this five type of ignorance is also an object? What do you mean, an object? Uh, object means which is made of... Uh, it's not physical, of, it's subtle. Uh, even subtle also, Mahatattva is uh, some object which is subtle. It, it is like um, some material object. Yes, well, but, but from the Mahatattva kind of, comes about... You, from, right, after the Mahatattva, then you get the different elements of creation. But this this five type of illusion, it is uh, it is made of uh, made of what is like made of that out of that twenty eight element. Uh, uh, what what is it made of? Well, it's mentioned that it's a cover. 
from created from his shadow the coverings of ignorance of the conditioned soul so the ignorance of the conditioned soul is a state of mind and the mind is a subtle body right so some subtle body is the, is covering the soul in one way yeah, a subtle body is there along with the soul, yes. But Maharaj, one problem is that this, this soul is not in that this soul is not made of any five elements, like Akastatva is not there, of so course. space okay. will be not there. Right, so yes. So something, something does not have a space and it is getting covered by something. Well, it, it doesn't have to be covered by it, but the conception of the ignorance is there. It's that state of mind which is there, the mind which is influencing, right? The soul is not responsible for the actions. The soul is simply the living force in the body. It's a living force, but the actual working, you know, the thinking, the doing, this is all coming from the mind, the body, subtle body, through the gross body. So means this illusion is, is influencing our mind, not to the soul. Yes, right. The illusion is influencing the mind, not to the soul. That's so, great. So, so Maharaj, how, how did conditional soul, like who have Agyanta and some liberated soul, both are different? Because we identify with the mind. We don't identify with the soul. This identifying with mind is is that is the illusion or yes that's uh, yes we we don't have control over our mind we have not situated our mind in proper knowledge that's why we've taken we've taken our birth in the material world and coming into the material world we come into this illusion we're subject to these different kinds of ignorance. So the wrong, we have this idea of, you, you can see that, that we don't, we're thinking ourselves to be independent of the Lord. This is the initiator, the, this Tamishra, the first ignorance. Oh, described in Bhagavad Gita, Icha Dvesha Samutena Danva Mohina Bharata. Icha and Dvesha, Icha, desire to be the Lord herself and envy of the Lord. So this is our, this is this Tamishra, this is the ignorance. And why do we have that thinking? Because that's in material world, because we're in the material world and we have that rebellious nature. We don't want to submit, we don't want to accept the authority of the Lord. While we are spirit souls, we're rebelling against the subordinate position. Now, the spirit soul is always pure, but it becomes influenced. Just like we say that, just like the sun is never covered, but where we are, from where we are, the sun is covered. Clouds. So, uh, mean our, yes, uh, the, that soul is not covered. But from what, just, his, just like a, the example of the sun, the, the sun is never covered. The sun is always pure. But where we are, we see the clouds are covering our vision of the sun. And so in the same way, the soul is pure, but at the same time, the, the mind, the ignorance of the mind is covering the soul. And in this way we're identifying ourselves. We're thinking, I'm the body, I'm the enjoyer, I'm the controller. Thank you, Maharaj. All right, so then we go on to the creation about these different beings. I wanted, how many people do we have in the class?
How many is in the class today? Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. So, let me see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So groups of two, pairs. We want to make certain groups. All right. The first group. The first group. You have to tell us about the yakshas and rakshasas. Right? Group one will do yakshas and rakshasas. Group two will tell us about the Gandharvas and the Apsaras. Group three, we want to hear about the ghosts and the hobgoblins. Group four, the sadhyas and the pitas. Group 5, the Siddhas and the Vijadharas. Group 6, the Kimpurushas and the Kim Kinaras. And Group 7, the Manus. Right? So seven groups. And we want each pair will tell us about the creation and the function and what these different people are doing in the universe and their nature, how they're created and what they do and what things, what problems they create or where they're situated. We want to hear whatever information is provided from them, from this section. Is it clear? I did not follow after group four. Group four is... Um Group four was to be uh, Sadhyas and the Pitas, right? Okay. And group five will be the Siddhas and the Vijadharas. Mm. And then group six will be Kimparushas and Kinaras. Okay. And group seven, the Manus. Okay. Mm. Right, so we'll have seven groups of two group three group three Maras, group three group three will be the ghosts and hobgoblins All right, so we have seven groups. We'll give you uh, like 10 minutes each, 10 minutes to just uh, get the information together and one person will present to us and tell us about these different species, how they're created and what they do in the universe, how to recognize them. All right. So we can break into groups. And you have 10 minutes. Putting us in groups or assigning yes. us? 
Uh, some, isn't somebody supervised? Is somebody not there to put you into groups? I'm not being assigned. Oh my God! Who's supposed to be there? Isn't isn't uh, the? Is somebody there to? Somebody should be there to oversee everything to put people into groups. Usually it's Partha Sarati Mohan. Is he not here today? Siddhartha Prabhu, are you hearing? Is Partha, Sar Partha Sarati Mohan there? No, ma'am. Prabhu is not there, ma'am. Oh. So nobody's in a group? Siddhartha Prabhu is with me. Huh? Is anybody in a group? Can we just? No, I, we can just. I think, huh? I think nobody, nobody have the uh, permission to uh, divide the group. Like they, they need to co-host or co-host in order to do that. Oh. Oh. How are we supposed to do this then? Siddhartha Prabhu, Chaitanya Prabhu, they are the co-hosts. Are they? Siddhartha Bachani Prabhu, Chaitanya Vishnu Prabhu. In uh, today's, uh, uh, some, somebody else's co-host, I think. Who? Who is it? No, no, they put me as co-host, but I don't know anything about mm. the groups, how to do it. Mm. Okay, so how will we do it? We, I can just, can I, could I, I don't know how to do it either. You know, nobody ever showed me. I always have somebody doing this. I get permission, I can try to divide it. Really? Well, who I'm is... Trying. So we have to make you a co-host? Yeah. So who can do that? How do we make Apurva, Nila, Chala, Mataji, Nila? Nil, what is your name? Nila Kaleshwari. Yes, How do we make this Mataji co-host? Who made who made Ramya co-host? Who did that? I have no idea. That is Sarati Prabhu. Where is he? He is not in the group. Might be anywhere. Maharaj, you can click in participants and their option will come. Really? Participants? Mm -hmm. uh, in Apurva, there, if you click, na, their yeah. option will be there. Then there's... Then there's make there's, her co-host. To make co-host, I... I don't see anything about making co-hosts there. It, I've got the names of participants, but I don't see where it tells you to make co-hosts. Uh, on that participants clicking that there. Huh? On that particular participants, no? Uh, if you click, no, like Apurva Nila, there, if you click, no, there are three options, there are chart, make co-host, right? It says mute 
Oh, it doesn't say anything about co host. There's an option more also. To okay, make co host, yes, okay. Now I've made you a co host. Is it okay? Oh, uh, I'm still not co host. Hmm? I'm still not co host. I think the Govind is somebody who can co host. Yeah, actually, I don't know how to do. Oh, okay, okay. I can try it. Maybe I can become a ghost. I'm still uh, not ghost. I've made you co-host. No, yeah, you are already made co-host. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I can try it. Yeah. Okay, 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 Yeah. Okay. See at the bottom of your screen, there's more on the far right. And then you just uh, see how many you want to have. But I think if you tell us we can join, you let it sign automatically. If we tell us we can join all of them, it'll be confusing. Did you, anyone got the option of joining? Okay, I have to assign it. You have to pay us. Yeah, okay, I pay. No, it is right. Yeah. Mm. Yes, have you done it? I don't see anything. It says 14 on mine. Oh, nine, mm -hmm. yeah, it's down, down to nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you have to make four, four groups. Mm -hmm. One oh, group. Okay. I think all the participants. Oh. What happened to the other people? There are six groups. Maybe we can um, join the Kinnaras uh, and Manu. I don't know. Sorry? If we can, uh, like, like, we can only make six groups. So we can join the six and seven, that Kinnaras and Kinnaras and Manu. Yes. Okay. okay yeah. yeah, now it's done. <laughs>
Hare Krishna, Rivati. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Actually, like uh, uh, Mataji who is with me, she is busy. So I am alone reading my whatever is assigned to me. What do you mean so, she is busy? Uh, um, Prabhuji, I have to go out uh, shortly and um, I have a, a, a garland making uh, duty for the temple. So I'm uh, doing that and I'm listening to it. I won't be able to read Prabhuji for today. You're supposed to participate in the class. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Maharaj. But uh, you knew. Uh, you had what to is the? I I can I, I can try, Maharaj. Uh, so our topic is what, Maharaj? Rakshasas and uh, ra yakshas and rakshasas. Yakshas and rakshasas. Okay. Okay. Let me try. Recording in progress. I think that they are both, right? Because sometimes it's said in Bhagavatam that Gandharvas was singing, dancing, and Krishna did something very nice and wonderful. But we have also a story of Narada Muni. Recording in progress. Apsara, Apsara, uh, Apsara cre created and by, by Brahma, we, by Brahma, then Brahma give up the body with Recording in progress. Which forgetting that such an occupation may lead him to return to an invisible body. The devotee of the Lord or one who is in Krishna and Howard does not need to perform such a ritualistic ceremony as Shrad because he is always pleasing the Supreme Lord. Therefore, his father and ancestor. Recording in progress. Brahma, where you can be perceived but not seen. Mm -hmm. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Why why is there so much noise there in the background? Uh, I think he must that Prabhuji must be in the temple. Where? He's in a factory. You can get a quieter place.
Anyway, how are you doing, Madhiji? Are you come? Have you got some uh, idea of what's going on there with the uh, with the with the Manus? Yes, Maharaj. I think we had to discuss about Kinnaraj and King Purushas. Okay. Have you have you got the information? You finished everything? Uh, no, Maharaj, I didn't get exactly. Uh, I just shared one of the conversations of Srila Prabhupada, but does, uh, where he talks about Kinaras and Kimpulsha. But he doesn't, there is not so much information in that. This uh, is in the thing. So, you know, you can go on and do the manus because no one's doing the manus. Uh, okay, Manas. What should I be doing about the Manas? Well, just tell me about what 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 information we're given there. What do they look like? What's okay. their function? Okay. Okay. okay Recording in progress. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we ultimately read and discussed. Sorry? Uh, we ultimately we read and discussed. So, Revati Mataji is the speaker. Mm -hmm. She's go is going to come uh, in a moment, I think. She didn't come yet. Okay, did we close the rooms? As you're 10 minutes up? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay, okay let, maybe we need to close all the rooms, right? Is everyone back? Yeah? Okay. So, Let's hear from Rivati Mataji about the Rakshasas and Yakshas. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. So I, I wrote few points uh, with Mataji, we discussed. Uh, so uh, it's, I, I, I got this point from the purport. Uh, in purport it is written by Prabhupada, they are the first created beings by Brahmaji, Brahma. And uh, they are born out of mode of ignorance. And they take the possession, uh, the possession created, accepted by these, uh, these beings are night, is night. And these type of people still exist today in our society as uncivilized men. Because um, is, in this we see they, they came from Brahma, Brahma and they started running after Brahma to eat him. So these kind of people still exist in society today as uncivilized men. So. These are the four points I wrote down, Maharaj. Uh, I might add uh, one point. I mean, I just want to add on to what Mataji said, that uh, they pauses the body at night and uh, they have uh, th uh, severe hunger and thirst. And that is why this, they were also trying to uh, uh, eat Brahma. They were both trying to eat Brahma? Not both, not both. I think Rakshasha is right. Yeah. So one who said he should be eaten are Yakshas, and one who said he should not be protected, they are Rakshasas. Okay. Yes. The Rakshasas said should not be protected, and the Yakshas say should be eaten. Yes, Maharaj, yes. Now we do see in relation to the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj is fighting with the Yakshas. And they often appear in Mahabharata, different beings, Yakshas, they seem to be very powerful. And in one purport, Srila Prabhupada says that, sometimes said that the people of Tibet are the Yakshas.
I don't know, but Prabhupada did mention like that, that that he says that there's some uh, conception that the, the, the yakshas are there on this planet as a Tibetan race. Associates of Kuberas and Yakshas, I think. Mm -hmm. Associates of Kuvera, Kuvera who takes care of the treasure of... Uh, oh, the Associates of Kuvera are Yakshas, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. So, yeah, they, they certainly have some power, <laughs> they have some opulence as well. But they have some bad habits, and they wanted to eat Brahma. Okay, anything else about Yakshas and Rakshasas? So Maharaj, uh, the Kshas and Rakshasas, they are born out of ignorance. Yes. But in which planetary system do they reside? And if they are residing with Kubera or being associates of Kuber, that a different planetary system than the hellish conditions. And demons usually reside in the hellish conditions, in the lower planetary systems. Well, we see demons, you know, there's demons on this planet as well. It's not that the demons are always in the lower planetary systems. There's demons everywhere. We do get them in higher planets. Certainly, Rakshasas, their, their planet is it, above our Earth planet. Right? So we cannot say that uh, just because their planet is, just because they're demons, that they're lower. Yes, it's a confusing point. I, I, when we were, when I was studying, when we were teaching the fifth canto, we saw that, that the Raksha, the planet of the Rakshasas is lower, is higher than our Earth planet. <laughs> and what to say? Just because they're higher in the universe, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're more godly. or less godly, but somehow it happens like that, that their planet is above the earth planet. What is the degree of ignorance is uh, more in case of demons than doctors, or of same level? Well, they're all demons. <laughs> right? Is it more in the case of demons or in, 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 than, than yakshas and drakshas? It, it's it's hard to say. We're, we're not really told. They're all demons in the sense that they're, they're not generally devoted. They do give trouble to the devotees. But Maharaj, in some pastimes we hear that, uh, uh, well, they become devoted, right? Like uh, Kubera. Kubera is also in that category? No, Kuvera is not a Rakshasa, or he's not a Yaksha, but he has, he has these people around him, like, you know, they're his servants. And you could say they're like protecting him, yes. looking after him. Okay. Okay. Just like Lord Shiva. He's, you know, he's in Lord Shiva's uh, surrounded with ghosts and hobgoblins in the crematorium. But it doesn't mean Lord Shiva's of their, of their level. Lord Shiva's being compassionate on them, giving his association. And the same way Kuvera gives his association to the Yakshas. So they get a second chance? The Yakshas and Rakshasas? To get a human birth or uh, become a devotee? Well, it will depend. It will depend how they associate, and you know, and it will depend on, on 
Kuvera, is he going to give them, what kind of association is he going to give them? Is he just going to take service, or is he actually going to try to influence them? Uh, Kuvera himself, we don't always think of him as being a great devotee, he's a powerful demigod. But it's not, the demigods are not great devotees. They have a lot of piety, but they have their material desires. So they associate with the demigods. And then, you know, it's a lot better than associating with demons. All right, let's go on to the next group, the Gandharvas and the Apsaras. Who is doing that, group two? Hare Krishna, me Maharaj. Yeah, so there were two verses considered about the Gandharvas and Apsaras. So they got created because Brahma was laughing. Prabhupada is laughing. Prahasya Bhava Gambhiram, Prahasya, smiling. And it was a very special smile, it was full of deep purpose, it is said, and she grant means understanding. So it was a, yeah, it was not just a frivolous laughing, it was kind of a, a deep, purposeful laughing, as, Prabh as Prabhupada says. And out of this came the Gandharvas and Apsaras. They are, Gandharvas are musicians, Prabhupada says in the purport, and the Apsaras are like dancing girls. So, and... It's not clear if Brahma was laughing because of the previous episode, because the demons were, the uh, um, Rakshashas were taking this twilight. So it's, uh, it's not clear for me if this is a continuation. So why he was laughing? It's, uh, maybe someone knows why he was laughing, but he was laughing and they got created. And for me, it's also the question because very often the Gandharvas are mentioned as the musicians and Apsaras as the dancing girls. So if if they are kind of the same race and the Gandharvas are, are the male and the Apsaras are the female, but I didn't think so. I thought actually the Gandharvas and the Apsaras are different races, so to say, but the Apsaras are most of the time mentioned as being female and they are the dancing girls. So there's also an interesting point. Gandharvas are not only musicians, we know they're also powerful warriors and they have mystical powers. They are not um, demigods actually, but kind of upa devas, they are under the devas, but above the men, about humans, above humans. And very often they are depicted as having wings, because in, in English we say angels, and we always say the Gandharvas are kind of the angels. But actually, I heard in a Prabhupada memories it was, as far as I rem remember, that when Prabhupada made a tour through one temple, I think it was even New York, the devotees were artistically showing the uh, Gandharvas with wings, and then Prabhupada commented, actually, they don't have wings. So there I was also surprised about that. But yeah, they have mystical powers, they can fly, so obviously they can fly, they're powerful warriors. And uh, Prabhupada mentions that kirtan, which the Gandharvas do, they are musicians, if they do it, for, if it's done for the pleasure of the Lord, it's a devotee activity, but if not, then it's demonic. So we know that Gandharvas do musical performance to illustrate Krishna's pastimes. Whenever he kills a demon and the, or when something happens like that, Gandharvas are also making music. But at the same time, we hear also like Narada Muni in his previous life as, I forgot the name, Upa Prahana or something like this. Upa Banna. He was, yeah, he was being a, he was a Gandharva, but did it in a demonic purpose, actually, the Kirtan. So, and um, then the second verse, because there are only two verses mentioning the Gandharvas, um, the other verse is said that, that, that Brahma gave up then a body which was shining and a beloved form of moonlight, and the Gandharvas took possession of that, and it said Vishwavasu and other Gandharvas. So Vishwavasu is mentioned, uh, is a, a particular individual, so he's, as far as I remember, also the leader of the Gandharvas. So he took, he led the Gandharvas and he took possession of this special body of moonlight of Brahma, which he gave up. So this was what we were discussing. Okay, thank you very much, yes. Interesting, something I very interesting points, yeah? Gandharvas, 
Yeah, that's right. Narada Muni was the Kandarva. What about Arjuna? When Arjuna was cursed, he had to undergo one year in incognito, right? He, uh, yes. W was that also, he be did he become a Gandharva, was it? Uh, as far as I remember, he just became a eunuch. Just became because a eunuch. he was in the he heavenly planets and he was cursed by Urvashi to become one year a eunuch. And uh, Indra told him, actually, it's a blessing. It will show up as a blessing. It was because he could play his role as, uh, as a eunuch very well. And so he was training then um, Uttara at the court of King Virata. Yes. But he was not. But he was teaching them Gandharva style. He taught them artistic presentation, and dancing. Uh -huh. I remember. And we also hear about Gandharva marriage. Right? Yeah, Gandharva marriage is. I don't know too much about it, but it's a kind of a simple romantic marriage where the participants, the bride and bridegroom, they just exchange garlands, kind of in private, and this is counted as being then married. But I don't know when this is allowed and how the details work out. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Okay. Hare Krishna, thank you. And then the next group, group three, was speaking about uh, ghosts and hobgoblins. And then Prana Maharaj, so we discussed that uh, these uh, Bhutas and Pisasas, they are known as uh, ghosts and hobgoblins. So they... <coughs> As we know that they don't have a gross form, that as we have already, you have also mentioned in our previous uh, unit 11, that they are under, uh, they take shelter of uh, Lord Siva. Uh, Lord Siva puts them in the womb um, uh, um of those, person, those persons who are uh, indulging in sex uh, without regard of time and circumstances. <clears throat> so they are um, um, given birth so that they will um, proceed in the path of self-realization. As we have already mentioned, that in Unit 11, right? the ghosts and pisasas. Uh, uh, and uh, they were created uh, <coughs> from his sloth. Sloth means uh, uh, tandrina. Tandrina means uh, laziness. Uh, they were created. Muthas and pisasas. Yes, can can you give some examples about ghosts and such people in our scriptures? Yes, Maharaj. So many cases are there. Ghosts. <coughs> um, um, <coughs> of course, in our day to day life, it is there. But in scripture, um, that. Uh, uh, we, I don't remember that it's there. Scripture, but in our day to the life, we find such over there. And of course, Prabhupada Maharaj says that uh, there are certain houses which are ghost hunted. And Prabhupada Maharaj uh, says in that house and chants the name Hare Krishna and that ghost goes away. And of course, in uh, other uh, cases like uh, that, uh, um, that uh, in Padma Purana, it is said that uh, that uh, Dundukari, Dundukari, he was uh, the brother of uh, Gokarna, and uh, uh, he was in Dutch, he was uh, doing so so many uh, um, uh, sinful activities. So he became a pushata, he became a preta. So um, uh, that uh, Gokarna tried, he gave uh, sadha in Baya, but he was not uh, <coughs> he was not uh, deliberated. But he then did this uh, small bhag of the week, bhag of the week in each day. Of that week, one uh, that uh, in a bamboo he took shelter, and each day one uh, knot is um, uh, um, uh, <laughs> one knot is uh, that is uh, uh, what you may say that uh, that uh, that, uh, that is um, I don't exactly remember that word. That in this in this way, in seven days, all these knots were uh, um, uh, released. And uh, thereafter, he got a very fine uh, body, that uh, is spiritual body. And uh, an aeroplane come, came and uh, he was going in that aeroplane. So, Bukhan asked, uh, there are so many persons who are hearing Srimad Srimad Bhagavad, why you are taking this person only? So, he said that because uh, this Bukhan, this Dundukari was listening very carefully. And also, he was also meditating on that. 
That's why I am taking him to the spiritual world. This is about the ghost in a Padabra. Oh, so from the ghost body he was liberated back to Godhead? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> in in Bhakti Vinod Thakur Leela is... Yes, yes, Maharaj, yes. They go, go, go ahead. Uh, yeah. They stayed in a temple uh, where there was a Brahma Rakshasa. And um, this Bhakti Vinod Thakur and also I think Bhakti Siddhansa and Sanskrit were also with him. So they chanted this name of the Lord, and in this way um, that ghost uh, was released. Yeah, there's one pastime where the village people were worshipping a tree which was inhabited by a ghost. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur hired a Brahmin to re read the Srimad Bhagavatam. And when, okay. he, when he finished the Srimad Bhagavatam, then the tree fell down. And the, and the ghosts left, never to trouble the people anymore. And Maharaj also, there is a, in Bhagavad Gita Mahatmya, that is also there in Skandapura, that uh, the eighth verse, of, uh, I mean, eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, first uh, verse, King Tad Brahma, King Adhyatma. And uh, by chanting these things, these two, these uh, words, and uh, one Brahmarakas was released. It was stated in uh, that. Uh, um, Bhagavad Gita Mahatma in 8th chapter. It is about uh, <clears throat> uh, that one uh, very uh, born in a Brahmin family, but uh, he was, uh, though he was uh, uh, having all basic knowledge, but he was uh, uh, not uh, worshipping Lord. So it is stated in Bhagavad Gita 8th chapter that it is in Amarjani Pura, uh, his name is Bhava Sarma. He was uh, um, indulging in sinful activities. After which, after his death, he became a um, palm tree. And in that palm tree, uh, two Brahma Rakshasas uh, took uh, part, uh, took uh, shelter there. Uh, they were previously, uh, and their husband was uh, a pussy lover, and the wife he was uh, a very learned in uh, Veda. Uh, so, this way, that wife asked uh, his, her husband, how can we be released from this um, uh, condemned uh, body? So his, uh, her husband said that uh, unless you do this uh, Brahma, you will think of Brahma, we uh, think that Brahma and uh, we will uh, do this Adhyatma, then how can we be released? So that wife asked, uh, what is that uh, Brahma? King that Brahma, King Adhyatma. <laughs> and when that uh, lady uttered this, this, uh, these two, uh, the, I mean, these points, so immediately, that uh, uh, palm tree, uh, what happened, uh, became a Brahmin. Palm tree became a Brahmin. And uh, those uh, two Brahmarakas uh, couples, uh, they uh, went to uh, heavenly planets. And that Brahmin, his name is Bhavasama, he went to Kasi, and there he uh, chanted this uh, half um, verse of this first verse of uh, eight, eight chapter, King Tad Brahma, King Adhyatma, King Karma Purushottama. And by chanting this uh, half verse, uh, they, uh, he went to spiritual world. It's in Bhagavad Gita Mahatma. Okay. I think it is in Skandapurana. Okay, thank you very much. Skandapurana. Okay, then group four. Maharaj, uh, I have a question here. Yes? Abu goblins, uh, they are also without bodies or they have bodies like us? Yes. What do you say, Prabhu? I am asking Maharaj, ghosts do not have bodies, physical bodies. Hub goblins, do they have, Hub, do they have, have the bodies? Well, certainly they have subtle bodies. They don't know about gross bodies. They may have gross bodies. I've, I've, I've no experience with hobgoblins, ghosts and hobgoblins. I would imagine they're on the same level as the ghosts. I don't know. Does anybody know? What do we say about hobgoblins? I think in the association of ghosts, and they must have similar subtle bodies.
I don't... Those, those who are very sinful, generally those who commit suicide, they become like this uh, ghost and... Uh, right. Yes, right. People who become sinful, who, people who commit suicide like that, they, they're not given a, a physical form. In Bhagavad Gita also we said that Janti Devaprata Deva, Bhutani Janti Bhuteja, those who worship the ghost, they go to their planet. Yes. And there is also a story that one person worshipped this ghost and so he offered fruits to them. So one Brahmin uh, with his associates, he took those fruits, he took those fruits. And uh, after death, they were, um, uh, um, Jamaras considered their um, um, activities and they were given the sentence of becoming ghosts and they were remaining in a desert. At that time, one Vaishnava um, went there. So when uh, that Vaishnava went, all these ghosts, uh, they, uh, one ghost became a tree and other ghosts, uh, they arranged some fruits and uh, fruits. And that uh, Vaishnava took shelter and under that tree and they served him. <coughs> after serving all these things, that uh, Vaishnava took the, those uh, fruits after offering to the Lord and uh, the remnants they took. And uh, after taking that remnants, they became uh, liberated. It is stated by our His Holiness Gauravanda Singh Maharaj in Gubanasa. Iskand Gubanasa. So they took the so, rem they took the remnants of the Vaishnava. Vaishnava, and they were released from that uh, ghostly life. Yes, wonderful. The Vaishnava was very merciful to them. He left remnants. Yeah, and he also went to that uh, desert because they want to go, they want to go everywhere for teaching. So in desert also, Vaishnavas went to teach. But we have that today, you know, the Middle East is desert. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> so there's a lot of preaching going on there. A lot of people are being liberated in the desert now. Yes, Maharaj. And in also our uh, Rajasthan, there is a um, Thar, Thar desert is there in Rajasthan, India. Yes, also desert is there in Rajasthan. Yeah. And be here. Maharaj, yes, these these categories fall in the class of human beings of eight four million species of life forms. Eight million four hundred thousand species of life. Do the ghosts make up one of these species of life? Yes, they must do. So they fall in the class of human forms. Four lakh species? Or? Not necessarily. Not necessarily human species. Subhuman. Because you have no physical form. You have no gross form. So it's not going to be considered human species. See, in the ghost body, they don't suffer old age and death and death, right? They remain so, in the go gross body. So, Maharaj, they do not have any special classification in Padma Puran, in that verse? They do not have any special classification? Yeah, in that verse. Well, they are what they are. They're ghosts, right? That's their classification. But they are also given bodies by Lord Shiva. That's he, what he does. He places them in the womb. Yeah, Lord Shiva arranges for them to get a gross body. Because in the subtle body, in the ghost body, they cannot make much advancement. Very difficult for them to do anything. So Lord Shiva arranges them for, for them to get gross bodies. Because Lord Shiva knows that in the ghost body, they'll create a lot of trouble. They'll try to take possession of people's bodies. And we get that, you know, ghost spirits entering into the bodies and taking possession of people because they desire to have the gross body. So Lord Shiva arranges for them to get the gross body. So therefore, Maharaj, they must be accommodated in the 
uh, classification of human beings? Well, when they get the gross body, then they may be, they'll be human beings, yes. But it doesn't mean before that they're human beings. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. All right, next group, the Sadhyas and the pit, Pitas. Sadhya. Who is doing that? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Please accept my humble business. Our wish will pass. Uh, this is Ramchandas. Uh, and myself and uh, Veda Arana Prabhu, we, we did the uh, group four. So, if by your permission, I would like to uh, give my comments on that, whatever I read. Yes, please do, Prabhu. So, uh, in the, the, we have two verses uh, where. Uh, is mentioned that uh, the sadhyas and pitas uh, they are they are uh, created from the invisible form of lord brahma from the navel of lord brahma the invisible form they got created uh, and they actually took this form and then the they possess this form and through this form they were basically receiving the oblations offered by the descendants uh, of the departed ancestors in the form of Sharada ceremony. So, uh, uh, they are basically like uh, uh, when uh, in, a, in a Vedic system, like uh, uh, the, uh, when, when a person leaves the body after that, uh, they are descendant, they offer a yearly ritualistic ceremony. Uh, Srila Prabhupada mentioned the purport, there are 15 days uh, which are basically in the month of uh, uh, Ashwin, like the first, uh, the Krishna Paksh, there are 15 days which are Shad uh, Paksh. So the, during these 15 days, they offer yearly Shad ceremony for the uh, departed souls. Uh, and uh, with that depart, what uh, Shilapur mentioned the purport is that uh, when the departed soul, they didn't have the gross body and they were basically be, uh, have done some kind of sinful activities because of that, they are suffering. So when, when their descendants offer the Shad oblations, because of that, they will actually get uh, a, a, a gross body and they will get a chance to further grow in the spiritual development. And Shilpur mentioned that performance of Shad ceremony is, is, is or offering oblation with Prasad uh, is, is currently practicing, especially in Gaya. There's a place named Gaya in Bihar where uh, there's a temple of Vishnu where, uh, uh, where uh, like, uh, uh, generally the descendant, they go there and they offer oblations for their uh, uh, departed soul uh, at the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. And then they will get a chance to get a gross body and then they will basically do further development in the spiritual uh, progress. Uh, Shilvara mentioned that for devotees, uh, we don't need to perform any ritualistic ceremonies. Uh, because devotees are basically always uh, uh, engaging in serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So uh, by performing uh, bhakti, or by performing Krishna consciousness, uh, so, uh, the Lord, Vishnu Lord Krishna is al already pleased with the, with the descendants. And because of that power, uh, their ancestors, uh, like, who, uh, like uh, uh, who are departed souls, they all get uh, like uh, uh, the mercy of the Lord. And Srila Prabhupada quoted an example from, uh, from 7th Kento where Prahlad Maharaj, uh, when Prahlad Maharaj asked uh, um, uh, Lord Narasimha Dev to deliver his father, who is very sinful, uh, who is basically like uh, 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 rejecting Lord Vishnu or, or, or like fighting with Lord Vishnu, so he showed the mercy on, on Hiranyakashipu. So then Lord says that like uh, wherever in the family where the Vaishnava uh, appeared, uh, that family like uh, uh, like many many generations like they got delivered they got basically get benefited by the uh, by the devotional service performed by the by the Vaishnava. so um, these are the few points Maharaj I collected from uh, those two verses so what do you think about householders are uh, iskon devotees did they have to do shraddha have you done any shraddha According to what Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, there is, there is no need to uh, perform ritualistic ceremony uh, because uh, by pleasing Lord, Lord Krishna, everything is done. Just by performing bhakti, uh, even in Chaitanya Sritamati, this is, this is said that like 
by performing bhakti all other things are being satisfied that is called of faith or or vishwas shraddha shabde vishwas par sadar nishchay by performing krishna bhakti everything will be accomplished so my understanding from this purport is that there is no need to perform exclusively with that as long as we are uh, fully satisfying the lord by performing devotional service well is that is that a high criterion is that something which is easily done for to fully satisfy the lord by our devotional service do you think everybody is able to do that uh at least like yeah i would say like follower shila purpa should be doing that if we, if you are if we have full faith on words of shila purpa and the words of uh, like uh, our acharyas then we should be uh, having the full faith on the bhakti process and continue that but if we have not full faith then yeah then people might have to do that those ritualistic ceremonies yeah right you're right yeah i agree with you yeah Yeah, we do find not everybody has that full faith. Okay, Prabhu, thank you very much. Anybody else has any questions on this? Uh, but Maharaj, uh, yes, sir. In this regard, I have a doubt. That means we perform ritualistic ceremonies, that is Shuddhi Kriya, etc. That is not recommended for the Vaishnavas or the devotees, they who do render or knowledge devotional service. That is fine. But how can one will understand that I have already I, in that position that I am performing? I am I am, I am performing sixteen hours chanting every day. I am honoring Mahaprasadam, and uh, I am studying Bhagavatam uh, approximately every day. Is it does it mean that I am performing uh, devotional services, which exempts me from performing these uh, sacrifices? Well, my understanding is a lot of it depends on your actual position in the Varnashram. You know, if like Prabhupada personally instructed, there was one uh, Brahmachari. His actually his name was Swarup Damodar, and he went on to become Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami. He was the uh, you know the scientist from manipur who was a very yes. dear friend of prabhupad so one he was with prabhupad in los angeles when he got a message that his father had passed away and he was saying to prabhupad prabhupad i have to immediately go back to india and when he told prabhupad about his father departing then prabhupad told him he said no no you don't have to do that he said you're finished with all of that that was uh, because he was a brahmachari and later on he became sanyasi and sp a very powerful spiritual personality a very pure soul so prabhupada understood his nature at that time when prabhupada instructed him he was just simply a scientist he was studying he was hadn't finished his phd but prabhupada told him no you finish with all of that because prabhupada obviously could understand his spiritual position however for householders it's going to be a little different i think you know for how what do you think ramya prabhu here like in alachua they commonly will sponsor a sunday feast in the name of the departed person offer some prasad some kind of offering yeah that's a nice way to do it because you're feeding the vaishnavas you're serving the vaishnavas that's a way to get blessings i certainly encourage people to do that when somebody passes away i say you can sponsor the feast we will distribute prasadam in the name of the person and that's definitely very beneficial to them but if you do a, a ritual you do some ritualistic offering offering some prasad and chanting some mantras mm, I, i wonder <laughs> how much benefit you get from it it is done and you know proper also mentions that these rituals are more for householders you know so people in the family life in the society and social things and like that and then they like to do these kind of things it's
for them, you know, more than uh, other people. But somebody who has faith, good faith in Srila Prabhupada's and teaching and the process of bhakti yoga, I think they'll be satisfied to just simply distribute prasadam and do some, maybe some charity in the name of the person. Maybe they donate, maybe they, or maybe they sponsor some books to be distributed on behalf of that person. Or Maharaj, I remember, I think it's in Chaitanya Leela, that one devotee, um, you know, that's right, because and he was complaining, no one will be there to do my Shraddha ceremony. Deity told him, no, I will. Do. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, he had a son and the son died and then he was worried that there was nobody there to do the shirt for him. But he worshipped the deity like his son and later on when the, when, the, when the couple died then the son was the one, the deity was the one to do the still. Yeah, that's a great member of Lord Chaitanya and he worship the deity like his child and so the deity did the last rites. That's one way of doing it. You know, usually the sun is there to light the fire when they burn the body at the time of cremation. It's the sun who's supposed to come and light the fire to do the last rite for the body. But if there's no sun, then who's supposed to do it? So the deity was the one who came and actually lit the fire. Okay, so let's hear from the next group. We still have to hear about the the Siddhas and the, who is it? Vijadaras? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, yeah, I was in that group. I hope Mataji won't mind if I speak. Um, not much is there, very short uh, description, but here we have uh, Lord Brahma giving us a particular form to the Siddhas and Vijayadharas. And the Siddhas, we know they're perfect in their yoga. They have all mystic perfections, and the Vijayadharas also have great uh, perfection due to their uh, uh, mystical knowledge. So here, Lord Brahma gives them this body that he had so that they could uh, be present but not be seen, sort of as a mystical power. And um, I guess to me, it, I don't know if it's right, but it uh, reminds me of when Kamsa was taking Devaki to her marriage home and he heard in the sky some sound, but he couldn't see who was speaking. Something like that. I don't know if it was a, one of these beings, but that would be my mm -hmm. understanding. Okay. We do have the example about the Vijadara who got cursed mm -hmm. in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. There's this pastime. Uh, Vijadara Vasudev. He was uh, he was had taken the form of a big serpent, and he was swallowing Nanda Maharaj. And the people, the Bridgebasi people, all came with burning logs. They were camping actually at the side of the river, and they were observing. I think it was Shiv Ratri at that time, and it, and and. Uh, in the night, this big serpent came and began to swallow Nanda Maharaj. And even they were beating the serpent with burning logs, but the serpent wouldn't let go. And then Lord Krishna came, because they all call for Krishna. So Krishna came and he touched the serpent with his toe of his left foot. And the serpent immediately transformed into Vijadara, a Vijadara called Vasudev. And so, he explained how he had been cursed to take this body of a big snake, but by the touch of Lord Krishna's lotus foot, he'd become liberated from the curse. So Sid, Siddhas, 
Yeah, yoga perfections, eight different kinds of yoga perfections are there. And we see these different perfections that generally they've been achieved by technology. It's described that uh, becoming so light you can fly in the air. Well, we have airplanes flying. People are able to go and fly in the air and walk over water. Yeah, we can go on the boat. So the value of these yoga perfections is not very great. Of course, there are some other refined yoga cities like Prapti City and Prakamya City and different mystic powers which can go against nature doing inconceivable things. So the Vidyadharas in the fourth canto are also described as being able to move through the air like a fish swims through water. Oh. <laughs> move through the air like the fish goes through water. I was thinking when you were talking about the Gandharvas and wings, I remember there's an illustration in the Chaitanya Charitamrita concerning, you know, Junior Haridas, who had committed suicide, given up his body at the Triveni, and they show a Gandharva, and they show the Gandharva with wings. Obviously, Prabhupada approved that picture. Really? Oh, yeah. Must have approved it, huh? Definitely. Well, well I don't know. It's some, but you said you That was very, that was, you know, all that was created during that period of the Chaitanya Charitamrita marathon to get it all done. And they would show the pictures to Prabhupada as they finished them so that he could approve them. You know, Pushkar here, my neighbor, told me about that's how they were doing. Uh huh. But Prabhupada said they shouldn't have wings, eh? Gandharvas don't have wings. <laughs> it's a Christian idea. Okay, let's go on. The last group about the Kanaras and the Kimpurushas and Manus. Mataji, Apurva Mataji, is it? Hare Krishna, I actually went to the group number five, the Siddhas and Vidyadharas. Oh. I think Samhita Mataji and uh, Shivlinga Adi Prabhuji is there. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, Mataji. Maharaj, as an instructor, can I speak about Manus? Yes, okay, speak about Manus. Thank you, Manus. So, uh, Manu, as uh, she, uh, Lord Brahma, after creating uh, all this one day, Lord Brahma was thinking that he has created so much, he was feeling little success in his mind. So, at that time, from his mind, uh, Manu appeared, and uh, uh, he Manu was given the same human form, just like Brahma. Uh, human being form and then uh, as soon as Manu was created seeing Manu's all the demigods and everyone they started clapping they started praising Lord Brahma they started praying that uh, this is the uh, best uh, human being you have created and then uh, Lord Brahma, what they did is all the demigods they prayed and then uh, Brahma he gave the uh, sacrificial methods to Manu and then he said that uh, you continue, you do the sacrificial um, uh, you perform the sacrificial right like this you will be gradually elevated to your self-realization and they say you will enjoy your material happiness this way Manu set the standards of sacrificial right which all of uh, the human beings have okay now I, I don't know but you say Manu has a form like Brahma human form you know, I always think of Lord Brahma because he's at the top of the universe. And, you know, usually top of the universe, the bodies will be more subtle. Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, yes, ma'am. So, how... how... Uh, in the, actually, I read the 50th verse that it is written, the self-possessed creator gave them his own human form. That is why I told him. Yeah. So Brahma has a human form. 
ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಪ್ whom they worship they take shelter of their body and they tell future is that uh, believable and how to understand maharaj is it believable well yeah it but it, it's a material thing right they tell the, they say they tell the future but if you become a devotee if you surrender to krishna they know your karma is changed so they cannot tell about a devotee they may be able to tell about ordinary material people materialistic karmis but they cannot understand the future of a devotee because devotees are not like that the, for the devotee is very different for a devotee one who is engaged in devotional service all the lines on the hand have no more meaning anymore yesterday one thing happened maharaj uh, i i went to my own village and there uh, they said one person came and he was shivering and shouting uh, like they said uh, narsingh dev came and it was just uh, lit uh, agarbatti and just say uh, all is well all is well like that he said yeah so i don't know <laughs> he said just uh, all is well then he he became uh, quiet and then everything is closed <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you can't be too much disturbed by these people you know what can we say you know this it's all under the modes of nature and this is a lot of the mode of ignorance 
people being possessed by different spirits. So we don't worry about these things, we don't get too close to it, and we don't take it too seriously. It's all concerned with the material world. Okay. One Mataji. Yes? One, one Mataji asked Mara, like she was uh, suffering these kind of things, and she asked uh, any solution, and I said, uh, chant a Krishna, and you will be free from all these things. Like Yes, right. That's the right thing. All right. So, so the Brahmas, the Rakshasas and Yakshasas are out of the mode of ignorance, and because of their behavior, they're called Rakshasas or man eaters. So the Yakshas, a little different. You can see. Prabhupada's a bit more kind to the yakshas. He talks about the rakshasas as being man-eaters. The yakshas the ones who said he should be eaten were called yakshas. The two yakshas are the original the, the two yakshas and rakshas are original creations of Brahma scattered all over the universe. So, <laughs> so they're scattered all over the universe. So that means not only in the upper, they're upper and lower regions also. And then we hear, we hear about the, uh, the demons wanting to attack Brahma. It was described here that Brahma dropped before them the effulgence form of daytime and the demigods sportingly took possession of it. Then Brahma gave birth to the demons from his buttocks, but they were very fond of sex and because they were too lustful, they approached Lord Brahma for copulation. So then Prabhupada talks about sex and how it's actually demonic and the more people are degraded the more they're inclined towards that and and then they also talk about homosexuality and Prabhupada said this is actually demoniac now we see the nature of Kali Yuga influencing the planet today, that you have homosexuality, it's, it's accepted, that you get people in very big positions in the government and politicians and so on, and they're known to be homosexual and so on. And we also get sometimes in Krishna consciousness, you get some people who come to Krishna consciousness who have homosexual tendencies. And it's a very big, it can be a real problem in our Krishna consciousness movement. Here you can see text 26 talks about this. In other words, the homosexual appetite of a man for another man in the ordinary course of life. Generally what happens, what we who have these get married and live with a woman. But generally, of course, it doesn't work out because their appetite for is more towards men than problem. Because a woman gets married to someone and the man's if the man is is uh, homosexual then it makes it very difficult. And generally the marriage will break up. So this is discussed here in this section. In relation to Brahma giving up the body, because we hear about Brahma giving up his body, so it's mentioned here in the purport, according to Sridhar Swami, Brahma's constant dropping of his body does not refer 
to his actually giving up his body. Rather, he suggests, he suggests, meaning Sridhar Swami suggests, that Brahma gave up a particular mentality. Mind is the subtle body of the living entity. We may sometimes be absorbed in some thought which is sinful, but if we give up the sinful thought, it may be said that we gave up the body. Brahma's mind was not in correct order when he created the demons. It must have been full of passion because the entire creation was passionate. Therefore, such passionate person, such passionate sons were born. And then we're told about beauty because we hear about the, the, the creation of the beautiful woman and how the demons are very attracted by the physical form of the beauty of the woman. And Prabhupada quotes Shankar Acharya. Shankar Acharya has advised all persons not to be attracted by the interaction of flesh and blood. They should be attracted by the real beauty in spiritual life. And then what is the real beauty? The real beauty is Krishna and Radha. One who is attracted by the beauty of Radha and Krishna cannot be attracted by the false beauty of the material world. That is the difference between a demon and a godly person or devotee. So the demons are very fond of the physical body, the, what they think is pleasure of the flesh. But Prabhupada explains that, that actually that enjoyment is not real. So we see Brahma having trouble here actually with this different thing, the mode of passion, because Brahma is the incarnation, he's in, he's the guna avatar and he's in charge of the mode of passion. So he has to do, cre he's doing creation, which involves passion. There has to be that passion to do creation. And though passion can bring a lot of distress and just being associated with passion, difficult. So it's mentioned here, as moths at night surround a fire and are killed, so the demons become victims of the movement of the ball-like breasts of a beautiful woman. The scattered hair of a beautiful woman also afflicts the heart of a lusty demon. and then speak about music and dancing. We heard about that. So kirtan is very important. We're not against singing and dancing if, if it's done for the pleasure of the Lord. When the ghosts and hobgoblins attack people, and who do they attack? They attack people who are impure, like people who are drunk and intoxicated and uh, just over, you know, have no control over the mind and senses. So they take advantage of these people. And the result is insanity, that such people end up becoming insane. They're considered unclean. Influenced by ghosts, they become insane. And then Shraddha is discussed. We discussed that.
Prabhupada also talks about the importance of early morning, performing our duties early in the morning. Spiritual activities performed early in the morning have a greater effect than in any other part of the day. Now, it's a problem, you know, some people, they, you know, they have difficulty just to do the, the, the spiritual activities in the morning. As, for example, maybe they're working late at night. They work late at night, and because they work late in the night, they, they get up late in the morning. And they get up late in the morning and then they're, you know, cooking for their child or something, put their child off to school, they're busy. And they don't get time to do their chanting until afternoon or evening. So what do you think of that? It's not as good as chanting in the morning, but still they're chanting. And as we say, in chanting the holy name, there are no hard and fast rules. You can chant any time. But Prabhupada does indicate you get more benefit if you do it in the morning, in the Brahma Mahurta, which means before sunrise. So that's an important point to note, if you can, to take advantage of Brahma Mahurta. Okay. And then we come to the, the Manus. And Prabhupada talks about sacrifice, sacrificial rituals are intended for the pleasure of the Lord. All right, any questions on this chapter? Everyone's okay? All right, so we'll stop here. If there are no questions. On Thursday, wait, uh, no, is it Saturday and Sunday, right? So we, we had no class yesterday. So we will have class next weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And we'll go on to chapter uh, 21 and 22. All right, uh, yeah? Sunday is uh, Ram Nomi. Does that have any impact on the schedule? I wondered about that myself. I'm not sure, but I noticed that, that on uh, maybe maybe I can uh, we can ask somebody who is uh, coordinating this because. Ram Nomi is a, certainly a festival day, but on the timetable I was given, it seems to indicate there's supposed to be a class. I don't know. But I noticed there's six classes, and there's only five chapters, and they're not very big chapters, they're not very uh, demanding, really. You know. So I don't um, I don't see why we would need six classes. So I'll look I'll look into this with the the management. Um, and we'll get back to you on that before the Thank before you. the weekend. Because next weekend is Ramnomi, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you for bringing that up, Prabhu. Yes, we'll look into that and we'll get in touch with you and let you know what's happening for next weekend. Okay, so thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbek Govinda Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.